this is my replacement sawmill for cutting mesquite. I made it st stronger and more accurate. The track is heavier angle iron and it's bridged with tubing, two by five inch. We'll get into that in detail a little later. Uh, similar mechanism as my first sawmill and that works good. Over here I have a, the cutting end of it. The difference in this sawmill is I use Acme screws instead of uh, cable to raise and lower the blade and the structure is much stronger. It's made from 3 inch tubing, 3 16 wall and I have the worn winch this time instead of driving the cable is moving a chain. Uh, the engine is a 13 horse. The have an intermediate pulley assembly which gives me a little adjustment better for getting the speed right and I still have the Hilliard go-kart clutch. So let's break it down now into little bitty pieces. This is my track for my sawmill. Uh, very simple and super strong. I use uh, angles for holding it together. They're five inch by three and a half quarter wall and for the tracks it's a uh, one inch uh, angle quarter wall uh, wheels roll on them. Now to make it steady I bridge it with uh, two by five inch uh, rectangle tubing three sixteenths wall. Uh, together, all coupled together, it is exceedingly strong. The uh, the saw dog mechanism is the same as my first saw. I have uh, varying lengths and uh, the, on the static end and then on the other end uh, this is just three-quarter pipe with one inch uh, T's on it and you uh, uh, tap them with a sledgehammer and then the chain and spring hold them together and they bite into the log and they'll hold a, a hardwood really well like mesquite needs to be really solid. Other than that it's uh, very simple. Your steel service center can cut your parts, which they did for me, and I just welded it together. On the front, I, I added a little piece here so that I can use a floor jack to move it around because I have it in a shop, and a set of wheels on the other side. And that just makes it portable for me. Uh, if you're going to go with a trailerable one, I would maybe go with 5 16 wall angles or 3 8 wall angles, particularly if you're going 20 feet, and uh, maybe go from 5 inch to 6 inch. Other than that, it's pretty straight, straightforward. This is a sawmill bare bones and uh, it doesn't have all the, the little pieces to it. This is basically how it works. Now it's cluttered a little bit but uh, let's ignore that for the second because those are all attachment parts. Uh, what we've got is a set of rollers, wheels. Uh, you can do this with uh, uh, wheels off a sliding gate from your gate guys, steel guys carry these, they're reasonable. I've got Acme thread holding it up, raise and lower it. And we got a nice heavy engine stand. Uh, this engine mount will hold 200 pounds. It's been tested, has no problem whatsoever maintaining that much. Uh, it's made out of 3 inch tubing, 3 16 wall, uh, very sturdy. Uh, you might notice that that we've got some reinforcement down here and we've got a lot of reinforcement at the top and that's because when when you're cutting hardwoods 20 inches off the ground there's a lot of torque. Now some of these things that, that look cluttery uh, this piece for instance uh, holds the, the safety cage. Uh, this is the holds the water container. Uh, another safety contain cage holder here, uh, push bar uh, over here is a battery container and then then little posts to hold covers, safety covers all over. So the saw is simple, it's just when you add all the other stuff it looks like. Now the uh, motor engine mount, here's a chance to look at it, slides back and forth on these tubing, has a, a shaft here to slide on. Uh, here we have the uh, bandsaw blade guide that goes in and out and on the top here this is the idler wheel adjustment and again it's a box so here you can see how the box is for going up and down it's just covered just made over the tubing with a little spacer 
uh, probably ought to, I use 20 gauge, probably use 16 gauge metal and space that on two sides and you'll have plenty of slippage and it'll still be pretty sturdy. Well, the uh, Acme rod is uh, got a trailer wheel bearing at the bottom on a shaft. Uh, just bored a three quarter hole, inch hole in the in the uh, Acme rod and welded it. Runs through a nut here that pushes it up and it sits at the top and then we'll drill another hole at the top and then we got a shaft out here to hook the the chain to make it turn. Okay now we've added the bearing holders and uh, they were set up when we built the machine so there isn't much to do with them. Uh, we have a 5 8 bolt and we have a, a slot there so we can do some adjustment and underneath we have an adjustment mechanism so if we have to fine tune it we still can. Since we set them up there's probably very little adjustment needed. Same thing on this one. We've added now the drive chain to drive the Acme rods and bolted down the top bearing housings. I have an idler bullet, uh, pulley there and an adjustment so that we can get the, keep the chain tight. Okay, now we have the shaft and bearings in. And you might notice on the back of the shaft here I have a nut there is a, a key in there so it can't turn. It's a safety feature and uh, you must have that or it will back your nut off. Also in the front you notice I have a, a safety screw hole. Same thing on the other side here. This is the drive wheel and on the back side there's room for the pulley. Uh, now we step up for the motor. The intermediate assembly is installed and we're ready to go. Now we've added the worn mechanism and the top adjustment has been made and it's ready to raise and lower. And also we mounted the engine, have the pulley set up. Now you can see how the intermediate assembly works. Now an interesting thing, you see these uh, structures here they have holes in them, top pin another hole, down below we have two holes. That corresponds with our safety gauges. They have a hole in the top and two pins. Top two pins at the bottom. Same thing goes over here. Okay, we're going to mount the safety covers. And mounted the two safety covers for the drive wheel. As you can see pin sticks through, the other two pins stick down. Real easy, just picks up, drops down. Same thing on this side, picks up, drops down, will not move at all. And these could be made out of wood instead of metal. The covers are made out of wood, and as you can see, I've got two holes and a slot down at the bottom which will fit right into that little bolt, and these two pins will do the same to each other. Here, we'll go do that. Okay, now the front two covers are on. I did this. I don't have the, the pulleys on there yet, but you can see how easy this is. By the way, I love wood covers for the front for sure. Okay, we've almost got our saw together now. I've taken the covers off the front, wood covers. And since then I've added, put the wheels on, put the guides on, on each side. If you look at the guide here, you can see it has a up and down adjustment. The back bolts used to adjust the tilt and then there, there's a bolt that goes back and forth to line the guide up. Okay, I've taken the time. Blade's now fully aligned. Put the water bottle in. As you can see it has a drain at the bottom. Uh, while we're at it, here's the close-up of the intermediary pulley setup. The winch now is hooked up. You can see the chain drive that drives it. Goes across the other side. There's an idler over there to adjust it. And that's how we get these acne rods to go up and down. On this side we've got a battery installed. Got a ruler so we can tell how deep we are. We put a cover on this side back here. Okay, we're going to put two more covers on. 
and then we should be ready to cut some wood. This is our raise and lower mechanism with the winch. Okay, we got it all completely assembled, got the covers on. This is uh, one of the first boards cut. Is that not beautiful grain? That's why we cut mesquite. Now you've seen a video of my mesquite cutting sawmill version 2. This one is much stronger than my original one, much more accurate, and it's not a difficult saw to build. Uh, you need a, a metal cutting bandsaw, the 64 and a half inch horizontal bandsaw, a good welder and a drill press, and it can easily be made. I, I used a lot of fancy things here, but uh, you could, by embedding the bearings, but you could easily use uh, pillow blocks and flange bearings to substitute for those. And it would just leave a small amount of uh, machine shop work requiring a metal lathe. And you could build this. Uh, I plan to have plans available shortly on eBay that cover the details, which are just too numerous to cover in a short video like this. Uh, I hope you can build one and enjoy it as much as I've enjoyed building this one, and boy, it works good.